Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Starkey Formstead. So if you did not see our shorts, we had a super busy morning today. As soon as all three dogs came out to exercise, the German located a snake. Not just any snake. The Godzilla of all snakes. So watch this clip real quick. Holy crap. Oh my good Lord. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh my God. Kill it. Y'all got it now. Kill it. Oh my God, you guys. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Get him, Atlas. Oh. Go and get him, Mom. Go and get him, baby. Go and get him. Get him, Atlas. Get him. Back up, Hammer. Let him do what he does. Oh my God. Now let me see if you've been bit. Y'all crazy. Yes, that's me crying out to Jesus like every other word. Sweet Jesus, Lord help us. It was terrifying, especially once they went from water to land with the snake. I realized I was on one side, three dogs surrounding the snake, and then here's my idiotic self. And the only path the snake had to get away. Well, I'm proud to, and thankful to say it was only a water snake. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All three dogs are fine. They are actually having rest time because they were all foaming at the mouth. So I've got them all inside, cooling off, letting their body temperatures go down so then that I can dry them off because they were covered. Clay, sand, water. I need to do a full body check. Somebody saw one of the shorts and he goes, why not just train your dogs to leave it? Okay, here's the thing, you guys. I could have yelled, leave it and my dogs are trained, they would have dropped it. Here's the problem. Had it been a poisonous snake, all right, and I would have said, leave it, they dropped it, the snake turned and attacked them. Now we're in a situation, okay? There comes a point of what I call no return. All right, there comes a point when in the moment, there's a second that you can make a decision and then your chances of making any decisions are gone because at that moment, there's only one way for that situation to end. I see that a lot when people watch police encounters with people. They always say, well, the cops could have done this. Well, I agree. Coulda, shoulda, it, you know, 24, hindsight is 2020, okay? But in the moment, in the heat of the moment, and you're having to make decisions, you don't always make the right ones. We're all human, right? Once the dog had it out of the pond and on land, there was no more leave it. It was a four foot snake. At that moment, I did not know if it was water moccasin or if it was water snake. Big difference. If you live in the South, you already know what I mean, okay? big difference. That moment, it was kill it. Kill it because mom can't get close enough to determine if the snake is venomous. Is the snake a potential issue to my dogs? At that point, once it hit land, it was a true and deadly threat in my mind. And there was a point of no return. When you hear me in the video yell, get it. I meant it. And my little dog, God bless him, y'all, he knew mama was serious. Now, that little dog, he'll get it on anything I tell him to, whether it's a hog, a person, a, another dog, he doesn't care. He, he's fearless. There's also a learning moment for the puppy, who, of course, is like the gigantic dog in the video, the white one, the biggest dog out of the bunch. He's a baby. He's a baby. His first real encounter with a snake was that moment. He's like, oh, wow, look at, what's this, what's this? <laughs> oh, look, something's moving in the water. Let me grab it with my mouth, turn and deposit it on the bank in front of my mom. That's so legitimately what he does. And then I'm like, oh, we're in trouble. I don't know what this is. Well, Atlas, which is the little dog in the video, he knew what to do. 
Once that snake hit that ground, it was kill it, okay? We're kind of in that situation right now in America and so many fronts across the whole country where we're in that moment of time where either we can yell, leave it, or we can yell, get it, okay? And then there's a point of no return. We're that way across the entire country. So today's video, we're gonna discuss the most important thing I can talk to you about. That is soil health. This is also gonna pertain to the health of potted plants, raised beds, okay? Because I'm fixing to teach you something 90% of gardeners do not know. No one's ever taught you this. Your plants don't pull nutrients from soil. They don't uptake nutrients that way. Your plant roots are fed. They are fed. There, there is an unseen living component to soil, whether it is potted in a raised bed or in the ground. There's a component of living soil that feeds your plants. And it's bacteria and fungi, okay? You can be growing food inside in potted plants and raised beds, but you still have to make sure that your soil is alive because the soil feeds the plants. This whole quarter acre, there has never one time in three years any commercialized fertilizer, pesticide, fungicide ever been put on that soil. Yet I can grow thousands of pounds of food in a quarter acre nine months out of the year. My soil's not depleted. How did I do it? I figured out the soil bacteria had to be fed. Once I increased the bacteria numbers in my soil, they then fed my plants the nutrients that have been in that clay soil for hundreds of years, just waiting, waiting to be uptaken by bacteria and fungi and then fed to plants, plant roots. There is the component you're missing. When you're buying stuff like triple 13, you're dumping it on the soil. Did you guys know that less than 30% of that is actually ever brought to the plants and fed to your plants? 70% of it just dissipates when it rains. It gets washed into all the waterways. Now I live at the end of the great American Mississippi watershed. So all you Northern states that your lakes and your streams and your canals and your rivers dump into the Mississippi, all of you home gardeners, all of your miracle grow, <laughs> all your triple 13 ends up in my water, killing all the life for hundreds of miles along where the Mississippi dumps into the Mississippi dumps into the Gulf of Mexico. We have a dead zone there and it's coming from every state. And a lot of them are, are agricultural states. Your poisons are coming down the waterways to here and killing our entire environment. And it's because you're dependent on man's fertilizer to grow soil. I mean, to grow plants because your soil's dead. So a lot of people ask me, Sam, what soil test do I need for my garden? None, none. If you're not a soil scientist, you really can't read those tests. And they're deceiving because a lot of people, a lot of agricultural universities are going to encourage you to do chemical analysis. You don't need chemical analysis. What does Sam mean? I'm talking, they're gonna want you to know how much nitrogen, phosphorus, all of that calcium, iron is in your soil, okay? 
What good does that do you? None. Doesn't do you any good. What you need are biological analysis of your soil. You need to know how much bacteria is present in your soil. You need to know your bacteria to fungi levels. You need to know how quickly your soil absorbs water and how long it holds on to that water. You need to know all of that. That tells you how healthy your soil is, not how much nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, iron, boron, magnesium. None of that matters if your plants can't uptake those nutrients and your plants can't unless there is bacteria. Also, once your soil gets to a one-one bacteria fungi ratio, you will have almost zero pest attacks. Why? Because your plant is so healthy that when pests attack it, it kills them, makes them sick. That's what I'm talking about. We have not been taught properly how to grow food in America in a long, long time. We have taught to be dependent on a chemical company's chemicals. And then you go to an agricultural college like LSU or Southern and ask a soil scientist to help you with your soil. And they're gonna send you for a chemical analysis of your soil because chemical companies fund the universities. Let that sink in for a minute. You have to think outside the box. Now, what I'm going to do today are drill holes in the ground with a handheld drill, because I'm no till. I'm gonna fill that hole with two things, rabbit manure, worm castings. The rabbit manure will provide long lasting fertilization to my soil, not my plant. The worm castings will feed my plant within three days of the nutrients that it needs to be healthy. When I say feed my plant, it means there's so much bacteria in the worm castings that I make that is available to my plants immediately. It's in the form my plants need. I don't need it to be converted. When you're putting triple 13, when you're putting manure, when you're putting compost, those products have to be converted into a form that your plant roots can then uptake, okay? When you use worm castings, you're providing nutrition in a form that your plants can immediately uptake. It is made by worms for plants. So there's no conversion that happens, okay? I make my own worm castings. I've had a lot of people ask me this question. What is the difference between your worm castings and what I can get, say, from miracle Grow or from Clegg's? Their products are dead. There's nothing living in that. That's no different than putting compost on your plant because they high heat it. They have to put it through a high heat oven and it kills all the bacteria. You're using worm castings because you want the bacteria in your soil. So if you buy it from a store, a big box store, just know that's not worm castings. That's a dead product. When you purchase from somebody like me or you do your own, what you're getting is a living product that feeds your plants until the earthworms come up, eat all the manure and compost you put in the hole, poop out more worm castings that then feed the plant. Now you're starting to get it. I can feel the light bulbs going off. So that is what I'm fixing to do. I've got some plants, transplants ready to go. I've already picked off the flowers because I don't want them flowering yet. I want them in the soil. I want their roots established before they flower. Okay, or I'm gonna have a weak plant that doesn't produce enough food to make it worth my time to have that plant. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to support our channel. I'll drop how you can do that for Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo. If you want the newsletter, you've got to get me your money before five o'clock tonight or you will not be on this month's mailing list. You won't get it till May 1st. God bless you. Please still make sure that you are subscribed to our channel for more informative videos like this.
Yes, they will. Chickens by design are God's little dinosaurs, you guys. And they love meat. They love meat. They love protein, and they actually need it. So here just a few minutes ago, my three dogs decided to have a fight with an almost four-foot water snake. Here. After the fight was over, I decided, well, I could try to throw this snake in the woods and my dogs are just going to drag it back out. Or I could bring it to my ladies and let them have a free meal. And as you can see, they are enjoying their snake snack. This is going to help them have more nutritious eggs for me to eat. It's going to provide the protein they need to stay healthy and strong. And it's free food. Got to work with what you got, guys.